generation worldwide not just only for the nation a radical guide it's time to make changes bringing interviews and radical education yeah, yeah. a better future what we welcome really to a radical podcast a place where we explore the stories ideas and movements that shape radical thought and action i'm your host jason bayless and today we're embarking on an insightful journey into the world of anarcho collectivism let's go Anarcho-collectivism isn't just a historical footnote. It's a living, breathing ideology with deep roots and a far-reaching impact. In this episode, we'll uncover its origins in 19th century Europe, highlight key figures who shaped its development, and traverse its global influence. From the historical struggles to contemporary applications, we'll see how anarcho-collectivism continues to inspire movements and communities worldwide. We'll also dive into the critical insights and lessons drawn from both the successes and challenges faced by anarcho-collectivism. This reflective analysis will not only deepen our understanding, but also offer inspiration for current and future movements. Before we begin, I want to extend an invitation to all our listeners. By joining our Patreon, you become more than just a supporter. You become a part of a radical guide. Your contribution helps us continue this journey of exploration and resistance. You can find the link to our Patreon page in the episode description. Your support means the world to us and helps keep the spirit of radical thought and action alive. Now let's step into the world of anarcho-collectivism, unraveling its complexities and discovering its enduring relevance in our time. Let's go! Today, our focus is anarcho-collectivism, an ideology as varied as it is influential. We're setting off on a global exploration to understand how this philosophy adapts to different cultural and socioeconomic environments. Anarcho-collectivism, often associated with mutual aid and collective action, is not uniform in its application. This philosophy has found its way into various settings, from urban collectives in Europe to community projects in Asia and Africa, taking unique forms while holding true to its fundamental principles. Central to anarcho-collectivism are ideas that reshape our understanding of work, community, and resources. Cooperative labor, in this context, is more than just collaboration. It represents a shift towards collective well-being over individual profit. Empowering communities involves concrete steps towards lifting each member's quality of life. Equitable distribution of resources stands as a direct response to the inequalities seen in more traditional economic systems. These aren't just theoretical concepts. They are practical, real-world applications that have shown both promise and effectiveness in various communities. To fully comprehend anarcho-collectivism, we need to examine its origins, key contributors, and the philosophical ideas that sustain it. We will look at how it has evolved over time and its impact in today's world. So let's begin our exploration with a look back at 19th century Europe, where this story starts... To understand the present and envision the future, we must first acknowledge the past. Anarcho-collectivism, as a distinct strand of anarchist thought, has its roots deeply embedded in the socio-political landscape of 19th century Europe. This was a time of immense upheaval and transformation. The Industrial Revolution was reshaping societies, and with it, new class struggles were emerging. Workers faced exploitation under burgeoning capitalist systems, sparking a search for alternatives. It was in this cauldron of social and economic change that anarcho-collectivism began to take shape. Initially, it emerged as a response to both the injustices of capitalism and the rigid hierarchies of traditional Marxist socialism. The idea was simple yet revolutionary. What if workers themselves controlled the means of production? What if communities managed their resources collectively, without the need for a state or authoritarian structures? This wasn't just a theory. It was a call to action, a blueprint for a new kind of society. Groups of workers and intellectuals across Europe began to experiment with these ideas, laying the groundwork for what would become a significant movement in the history of political thought. Anarcho-collectivism, therefore, was born out of both necessity and vision. It was a direct response to the times, a product of its environment, Yet it carried within it the seeds of a timeless idea that people, when united and organized collectively, have the power to shape their destinies. With these historical roots in mind, let's turn our attention to the figures who played pivotal roles in shaping anarcho-collectivism. Their contributions not only defined the movement, but also left an indelible mark on the broader canvas of anarchist thought. 
As we navigate the currents of anarcho-collectivism, it's crucial to recognize the luminaries who illuminated its path. Two figures stand out in this regard, Mikhail Bakunin and James Guillaume. Their ideologies were not merely abstract concepts, but were deeply intertwined with the turbulent historical periods they lived through. Mikhail Bakunin, often considered one of the fathers of revolutionary anarchism, brought a fiery passion and a deep critique of both state and capital. Bakunin's ideas were radical for his time. He envisioned a society where freedom was not just a concept, but a lived reality, achieved through the abolition of the state and the establishment of collectives. His critique of authoritarian socialism was as profound as his critique of capitalism. Bakunin believed in the spontaneous revolutionary potential of the working class and peasantry, advocating for direct action as a means to dismantle oppressive structures. Alongside Bakunin, James Guillaume played a critical role. Guillaume, a Swiss anarchist, collaborated closely with Bakunin and was instrumental in the development and dissemination of collectivist ideas. He focused on the organization of labor and the education of the working class, believing that awareness and collective action were key to societal transformation. Guillaume's contributions were significant in structuring the practical aspects of anarcho-collectivism. He worked on outlining how a stateless collectivist society could function, emphasizing the importance of federations of workers' associations. His writings and organizational efforts provided a blueprint for how workers could manage industries and communities without hierarchical structures. His work, ideas on social organization, and his contributions to the Jura Federation provided practical strategies for collective management. His emphasis on education and intellectual empowerment of workers laid the groundwork for sustainable collective action. Though differing in approaches and focuses, Bakunin and Guillaume shared a common vision, a society free from authoritarian rule, where individuals cooperated as equals. Their legacies are not just in the theories they espoused, the movements they inspired, and the practical experiments in collective living and working that followed. These key figures were not just theorists, they were activists, deeply involved in the struggles of their time. Their lives and work demonstrate the intertwining of thought and action, a hallmark of anarcho-collectivism. Understanding the contributions of Bakunin and Guillaume helps us grasp the philosophical underpinnings of anarcho-collectivism. It's a philosophy deeply rooted in the idea of collective action and mutual aid, standing against authoritarian structures. In exploring anarcho-collectivism, a deeper understanding of its core ideas is crucial. This philosophy is built on principles like mutual aid, communal responsibility, and a firm opposition to authoritarian structures. Mutual aid is at the core of anarcho-collectivism. It's a concept that regards the community's well-being as essential to the individual's well-being. Far from being an act of charity, mutual aid is about cooperation and support as essential elements for the prosperity of all. It's a challenge to the idea of competitive individualism, suggesting a model where shared effort and resources are key to the success of a community. The principle of mutual aid was vividly demonstrated by the Jura Federation in Switzerland during the 19th century. This federation was a practical embodiment of anarcho-collectivist principles, where mutual support and cooperation weren't just ideals but everyday practices. Their approach to organizing labor and resources collectively provides a concrete example of mutual aid in action. The what federation? Okay, let's take a moment to back up. The Jura Federation, formed in Switzerland during the 19th century, wasn't just an abstract concept. It was a network of watchmaking cooperatives and labor unions in the Jura region that put anarcho-collectivist principles into daily practice. This federation functioned based on principles like collective ownership of tools and workshops and decision-making processes that were inclusive and participatory. They organized labor in a way that each member contributed according to their ability and in return received according to their needs. This was a direct application of mutual aid, where support and cooperation were integral to the economic and social well-being of the community. In the Jura Federation, we see a vivid example of mutual aid. Workshops, shared resources, workers supported each other in times of need, and the profits were distributed equitably. This model challenged the prevailing capitalist norms of the time, offering a living, breathing example of how an anarcho-collectivist society could function effectively with a focus on collective welfare and mutual support. The Jura Federation's approach to organizing labor and resources collectively wasn't just a theoretical experiment. 
It was a practical demonstration of mutual aid in action. It showed how a society could operate on principles of cooperation and shared responsibility, standing in stark contrast to the individualistic and competitive systems prevalent in the broader society. Now back to the aspects of anarcho-collectivism. Picking back up with communal responsibility, which goes beyond simple cooperation. This is about creating systems where decisions are made collectively and actions are for the collective benefit. In this setup, every community member has a say and a role. This approach counters hierarchical systems, promoting an organizational structure where all members share power and responsibilities equally. A defining feature of anarcho-collectivism is its firm opposition to authoritarian structures. This belief stems from the understanding that centralized power often leads to oppression and inequality. The ideology advocates for the elimination of these structures, envisioning a society where individuals cooperate freely without coercion or domination. These foundational principles of anarcho-collectivism are not just theoretical. They have shaped real communities and movements, driving the vision of a society where shared responsibility and cooperation lead to a more equitable and just existence, free from oppressive control. Grasping these fundamental ideas gives us insight into anarcho-collectivism's impact throughout history and its continuing relevance in our contemporary world. Anarcho-collectivism, a philosophy born in the 19th century, has significantly influenced the broader anarchist movement and interacted dynamically with other political ideologies throughout history. Let's trace these impacts and interactions to understand the lasting legacy of anarcho-collectivism. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, anarcho-collectivism played a pivotal role in shaping the anarchist movement. Its emphasis on collective ownership and direct action resonated with workers and intellectuals alike, particularly in a time when industrialization was radically altering social structures. One of the most significant impacts of anarcho-collectivism was its contribution to the development of syndicalism. This was especially evident in countries like Spain, where anarcho-syndicalism became a powerful force. But what exactly is anarcho-syndicalism? It's a theory that advocates for workers' direct action and self-management. It aims to establish a society based on workers' collectives and the federation of these collectives, bypassing traditional political structures and focusing on direct worker control of the means of production. The principles of anarcho-collectivism, such as workers' self-management and direct action, became foundational to the syndicalist movement, influencing strategies and organizational structures. Moreover, anarcho-collectivism's insistence on anti-authoritarianism and direct democratic practices also challenged other leftist ideologies, notably Marxism. The debate between collectivists and Marxists, particularly on the role of the state and the nature of the revolution, was a defining feature of the socialist movement in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The influence of anarcho-collectivism extended beyond ideological debates it was evident in significant historical events. Let's take a moment to dive into one such event, the Spanish Civil War, a conflict from 1936 to 1939 that was not only a struggle between fascism and democracy, but also a battleground for various socialist ideologies. In this tumultuous period, anarcho-collectivist principles were vividly enacted by collectives in Catalonia and Aragon. These regions became remarkable experiments in anarcho-collectivist living. Communities organized themselves around the principles of direct democracy, collective ownership, and workers' self-management. Factories, farms, and even services like healthcare and education were collectively run, demonstrating a practical application of these ideas in a society in upheaval. This period in Catalonia and Aragon stands as a historical testament to the practicality and impact of anarcho-collectivism. Amidst the chaos of war, these collectives showed that a society based on mutual aid, shared responsibility, and direct action was not only possible, but effective. It offered a glimpse of what a society structured on anarcho-collectivist principles could look like, even under the most challenging circumstances. However, the rise of totalitarian regimes in the early 20th century and the Cold War politics of the mid-20th century presented challenges to anarcho-collectivism as these environments were hostile to libertarian socialist ideologies. Despite these challenges, the principles of anarcho-collectivism 
continued to inspire libertarian and autonomous movements, even influencing modern social movements that challenge corporate globalization and advocate for community-based solutions. The historical journey of anarcho-collectivism is a testament to its resilience and adaptability. From influencing major political movements to surviving in the face of authoritarian challenges, its principles continue to be relevant in contemporary discussions about social organization and political activism. With this historical perspective, we can better appreciate anarcho-collectivism's impact on the anarchist movement and its complex interactions with other political ideologies, shaping its legacy and relevance in today's world. As we turn our attention to the present, it becomes clear that the legacy of anarcho-collectivism continues to inform and impact contemporary anarchist thoughts and actions. Today's global landscape, with its unique challenges and opportunities, still resonates with the principles of anarcho-collectivism. In the current era, we see the enduring influence of anarcho-collectivism in various forms. Grassroots movements around the world often echo its principles, whether they are fighting against environmental degradation, advocating for social justice, or challenging corporate globalization. Take, for example, the global environmental and just transition movement. Here, the principles of mutual aid and communal responsibility are evident. Activists and communities unite, pooling resources and efforts to combat climate change and protect natural resources. This collective action mirrors the anarcho-collectivist ideal of working together for the common good, transcending individual interests. In urban settings, we see anarcho-collectivism's influence in the rise of cooperative housing and community gardens. These initiatives are based on the idea of shared ownership and management, reflecting the movement's emphasis on direct democracy and collective decision-making. Consider Cooperation Jackson in Jackson, Mississippi, as an illustrative example. While not explicitly identifying as anarcho-collectivist, this initiative exhibits principles that resonate deeply with those of anarcho-collectivism. They are committed to creating a sustainable and equitable community, focusing on collective ownership, management, and direct community empowerment. Cooperation Jackson's engagement in developing worker cooperatives and building economic democracy mirrors the anarcho-collectivist ethos. Their practices of mutual aid and communal decision-making reflect a similar commitment to social transformation as seen in anarcho-collectivist principles. This serves as an example of how these ideals can be relevant and applied in modern initiatives, even if the specific label of anarcho-collectivism is not used. To hear more about Cooperation Jackson from the founders, visit the latest panel conversation on a radical guide, link in the description. On a larger scale, the anti-globalization movement showcases anarcho-collectivist principles in action. Here, diverse groups unite to oppose the centralization of economic power and advocate for more equitable, community-focused economic systems. This global network of resistance underscores anarcho-collectivism's opposition to authoritarian structures and its promotion of decentralized grassroots organization. The modern digital landscape has also been influenced by anarcho-collectivism. Open source projects and collaborative platforms exemplify the principles of collective creation and free distribution of resources and knowledge, challenging traditional models of ownership and control. However, it's important to acknowledge that the application of anarcho-collectivism in the modern world is not without its challenges. The complexity of global systems and the pervasive influence of technology present new obstacles and dilemmas for the movement. Anarcho-collectivism's impact on contemporary anarchist thought and actions is significant and multifaceted. Its principles continue to inspire and shape movements across the globe, demonstrating the ideology's adaptability and relevance in the 21st century. As we take a step back to analyze anarcho-collectivism, it's crucial to consider its triumphs and challenges. This reflective analysis helps us better understand the ideology and its practical implications. Anarcho-collectivism's successes are as notable as its challenges. A prime example is its role in the Spanish Civil War. In Catalonia and Aragon, anarcho-collectivist principles guided the creation of collectives that manage resources and decision-making democratically, showcasing the ideology's potential in real-world governance and economy. However, these achievements were met with resistance and ultimately suppressed by the Franco regime, illustrating the vulnerability of anarchist structures in the face of authoritarianism. 
Similarly, modern movements influenced by anarcho-collectivism, like Cooperation Jackson, face challenges in navigating a world dominated by capitalist economies and state-centric political systems. These examples highlight the ongoing struggle to implement and sustain anarcho-collectivist ideals within existing societal frameworks. From these historical and contemporary manifestations, we glean essential lessons. The persistence of anarcho-collectivism, despite opposition, underscores the resilience of its core principles and their continued relevance in seeking egalitarian social structures. The adaptability of anarcho-collectivism is another critical lesson. Its principles have found expression in various movements and contexts, from early 20th century Europe to modern urban collectives, showing the ideology's capacity to evolve and remain pertinent. Moreover, the practical successes of anarcho-collectivism, both past and present, inspire current and future activists. They demonstrate the feasibility of alternative societal models based on mutual aid, shared responsibility, and direct democracy, offering blueprints for those working towards societal change. As we draw this exploration of anarcho-collectivism to a close, let's reflect on the key insights we've gathered and consider the paths forward. An essential takeaway from our journey through anarcho-collectivism is the immense value of diversity. Across the globe, we've seen diverse cultural interpretations of anarcho-collectivism, each enriching the ideology with unique perspectives and practices. From the collectives in Catalonia and Aragon during the Spanish Civil War, to contemporary examples like Cooperation Jackson, anarcho-collectivism demonstrates its adaptability and relevance in varying cultural and social contexts. This diversity is not just a strength, but a necessity. It allows anarcho-collectivism to resonate with people from different backgrounds and experiences, fostering a richer, more inclusive approach to social organization and resistance. The varied applications of anarcho-collectivism remind us that there are many ways to envision and create a more equitable and just society. I want to encourage you to actively explore and engage with the diverse forms of collective organization and resistance. There's a wealth of knowledge and experience to be gained from understanding different interpretations and applications of anarcho-collectivism. By doing so, we foster a sense of global solidarity and communal learning. Whether it's participating in local cooperatives, joining movements, or simply learning about different anarchist philosophies and practices, each step you take is a contribution to a broader movement towards social change. It's through these collective efforts that we can continue to build and strengthen the foundations for a more equitable world. Remember that the journey of understanding and applying anarcho-collectivism is ongoing. It's a path marked by continuous learning, adaptation, and collective effort. Let's carry forward the spirit of mutual aid, shared responsibility, and direct democracy. Radical education, yeah, yeah. A better future, what we really need. Not rooted in capitalism or supreme. As we conclude our discussion on anarcho collectivism, it's a great opportunity to share how you can further engage with and support the work we do at a radical guide. First off, for those who wish to play a more active role in our community, consider visiting our Patreon page. Your support is vital. It not only helps sustain our efforts, but also allows you to influence and shape the future of a radical guide. You'll find a link to our Patreon in this episode's description. If you want to dive deeper into the world of anarcho-collectivism, our Radical Audiobook series is here to enrich your understanding. We start with Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution by Peter Kropotkin. This foundational work explores the concept of mutual aid, a cornerstone of anarcho-collectivism, through a blend of historical analysis and natural observation. But our journey doesn't end there. We also explore the insights of Murray Bookchin in social ecology and communalism. This audiobook offers a modern perspective, connecting the dots between anarcho-collectivism, ecological concerns, and communal solutions. And for a more interactive experience, visit a Radical Guides map feature. Here you can find interesting locations like the statue of Peter Kropotkin in Dimitrov, Russia, among many other sites significant to anarchist history and culture. It's a unique way to explore the physical landmarks of radical history and connect with the legacy of thinkers like Kropotkin. So, whether you're supporting us on Patreon, diving into our audiobook series, or exploring radical landmarks on our map, 
Your engagement is what makes a Radical Guide a vibrant and educational space for all those committed to learning about and practicing radical change. Let's go! As we come to the end of today's episode on anarcho-collectivism, I hope this journey has been as enlightening for you as it has been for me. We've traveled through time and across continents, exploring this powerful ideology's rich history and dynamic presence. From the early roots of anarcho-collectivism in 19th century Europe to its influence on modern movements and communities, we've seen how these principles of mutual aid, communal responsibility, and opposition to authoritarian structures continue to resonate and adapt to our changing world. Today's exploration is just the beginning. The stories of resistance, the struggles for justice, and the endeavors for a better world are ongoing, and each one of us has a role to play in this narrative. I want to take this moment to thank you for joining us on a Radical Podcast. Your engagement, your curiosity, and your support are what make this journey meaningful. If you found today's episode insightful and wish to support further, consider becoming a member of our Patreon community. Your contributions help us keep the spirit of radical exploration and education alive. Remember, the journey of learning and activism doesn't end here. Visit a radical guide, explore our resources, engage with the community, and until our next time together. Stay inspired, stay engaged, and continue to follow ideas, not people. Yeah, talking freedom and liberation. Worldwide, not just only for the nation. A radical guide, it's time to make changes. Bringing interviews and radical education. Yeah, yeah, a better future, what we really need. Not rooted in capitalism or supremacy. Yeah, yeah, trust, you don't want to miss it. We bring the truth right to you. The past, present, and future. Let's go. A radical guide, that's what this is. Highlighting the diverse world of resistance. Let's go.